Hi, I'm Bob Stern, a professor of geosciences at the University of Texas at Dallas, and I'm here to explain the Wilson cycle, one of the key concepts of our science. I'll tell you a little about where the idea came from, and then I'll explain the five stages of the Wilson cycle. The Wilson cycle describes the sequence of geological processes involved in the formation, evolution, and eventual closure of ocean basins over hundreds of millions of years. Named after the Canadian geophysicist J. Tuzo Wilson, the cycle illustrates how tectonic plate movements cause continents to break apart, form new oceans, and then converge again, leading to mountain building. In 1966, before the theory of plate tectonics was developed, Wilson noticed that the early Paleozoic fossils in eastern North America and Europe were similar, suggesting that these regions were next to each other at that time. They must have been separated by continental drift and formation of an intervening ocean, but this episode of ocean opening must have happened before the present Atlantic Ocean existed. Wilson concluded that there must have been an earlier ocean that opened and closed. Wilson's study supported the still controversial hypothesis of continental drift, which led to development of plate tectonics, which revolutionized the Earth sciences. The fossil Paleozoic Ocean was named Iapetus. The name Iapetus Ocean for the Paleozoic precursor to the Atlantic Ocean originates from Greek mythology. Iapetus was the father of Atlas, after whom the present-day Atlantic Ocean is named. Naming the ancient ocean Iapetus indicated that this early ocean existed before the present Atlantic Ocean began to form. Here's a simple diagram showing the five Wilson cycle stages, which proceed in a clockwise direction and take hundreds of millions of years. The five stages, beginning with continental rifting, continue through opening of an ocean and development of passive continental margins. Next is the formation of a new subduction zone. Subduction closes the ocean, bringing the separated continents back together, ending in continental collision. The Wilson cycle starts again. Let's take each of the five steps separately and illustrate each with a video. First is continental rifting. As the crust is stretched beneath the rift, volcanic activity can occur, creating faults and eventually leading to the development of a rift valley and a narrow ocean. The animation on the right shows an ongoing example of this stage, the opening of the Red Sea between Northeast Africa and Arabia. As the rift widens, seafloor spreading starts in the new ocean and the two continental fragments move farther and farther apart. The margins of each continent subside beneath sea level, making continental shelves where thick sequences of sedimentary rocks are deposited. The animation on the right shows an ongoing example of this stage, the widening of the Atlantic Ocean. At some point, a new subduction zone will form because the oceanic plate becomes too dense and starts to sink. We didn't have any idea about how this happened until recently because the subduction initiation process occurs rarely and when it does, it happens on the seafloor, hidden from view. The animation on the right shows how we think it happens. Once the new subduction zone forms, the oceanic plate is progressively subducted and the ocean begins to narrow and the two continental fragments begin to move towards each other. The animation on the right shows how a subduction zone operates. Subduction will continue until all of the oceanic plate is consumed and the continents meet. Continental crust is less dense than oceanic crust and the subduction zone becomes jammed, leading to the final stage. The final stage of the Wilson cycle occurs when the continents finally collide to form a large mountain range. A good example of this is the modern Himalayas, where the Indian plate continues to collide with the Eurasian plate closing an ancient ocean basin known as the Tethys Ocean. The animation on the right shows this collision. These five stages of the Wilson cycle highlight the dynamic nature of Earth's surface, driven by plate tectonics and the continuous opening and closing of ocean basins. Over geological time, this process contributes to the recycling of the Earth's crust and the constant reshaping of continents and oceans. Thanks for listening.